Basement level vibes with another one, another one straight up blackness. I ya I who tell the truth, Mark Benscop defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benscop registration is the fruit. Mark Benscop straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth. Mark Benscop defend the ghetto youth. Mark Benscop registration is the fruit. Mark Benscop straight up from the root. Mark Benscop, I do it for the love. Him not do it for no money. Straight up, him attack, educating everybody. Big up my friends and big up my family. Turn on the radio, catch the vibes, it's integrity. Straight up, Benscop stands for unity. One people, one nation. And one destiny Free up the truth in at the air Even the blind can see mm. The deaf can hear The dumb can talk The cripple can walk Boom I who tell the truth Mark Benscock Defend the ghetto youth Mark Benscock Registration is the fruit Mark Benscock Straight up from the root Mark Benscock I who tell the truth Mark Benscock Defend the ghetto youth Mark Benscock Registration is the fruit Mark Benscock Straight up from the the root, my friends, we are figured the wrong. Grab a seat and sit down, pay attention. Education, liberation, we are fist and strong. Benz cop the pond, the radio, lively up the program. Everybody call somebody and let them turn and tune and pond the radio and cut the boom song. We boom it up already, we have to boom it up again. Expose and reveal them. I who tell the truth, Mark Benz cop. Defend the ghetto youth, Mark Benscop, registration is the fruit, Mark Benscop, straight up from the root, Mark Benscop, I who tell the truth, Mark Benscop, defend the ghetto youth, Mark Benscop, registration is the fruit, Mark Benscop, straight up from the root, Mark Benscop, I do it for the love, him not do Hey fans, it's karaoke and oldies night this and every Thursday at Clock Twilight Sideline Dam, Buxton. Dance to the magical songs of yesteryear by popular DJs and Camps Audio. Admission is free. Come out, let's make memories at Clock Twilight Sideline Dam, Buxton North. All right, hey, guess what? Good night, welcome. My name is Mark Benchap and welcome to Straight Up. I uh, want to thank, first of all, our operator, Lemon, has been doing a good job. He has been on the job two weeks now without taking a day off. And I suspect that something else is up his sleeves. He may quit for two weeks or whatever, but Lemon will always be Lemon. And don't forget, if you have immigration matters, anything, you want to adjust your status, you want to file for your citizenship, you want to file for a loved one who is over here and you can petition for that person. Remember, we do it all right here at um, Benjab Consultancy. Do give me a call later at 917-714-1082 and we get the job done for you. All right, don't forget, if you have money and you're in Guyana, you can do some grocery shopping. Go over to um, 
Andrews Supermarket. Give them your support. And if you're in Brooklyn, you know what? This uniform store, they have everything there. If you uh, want to get some nurse uniforms or whatever, nurses' uniforms, whatever it is, school uniforms, it's all right there. All right. So, hey, guess what we're going to be talking about this evening? You know, uh, before we get to our guest, um, Mr. Royce Ford, uh, let me just... I know we have some apostles or apostle watching this show and the apostles are basically they're watching and they're praying for me. They're praying for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, apostle. I'm not going to call your name. I know you're watching you and your wife. Uh, good night to both of you. And thank you both for watching this evening. But let me say good night to all of our beautiful listeners. Every single one of you are beautiful. Some of you might get vexed. It's okay. And some of you bumps might raise. It's okay. But that's all the nature of the game, right? Life is too short. Why get a frowsy face? <laughs> all right. Good night to all of you. And I really do mean every one of you. Let me call some of your names. If I don't call your names, don't get vexed. Don't think that I'm just leaving you out for any reason. Desiree Smart Felix, uh, how are you? Lynette Nelson, Deborah Sharona Lynch. You can't stop Deborah. Once she got Wi Fi, she is always here. She's saying, share the link. Thank you so much, uh, Deborah. And thank you so much to all of you who, are share, uh, who have already shared the link. Thank you. Let me go down the list. Brenda, how are you tonight? Brenda, Brafi. Break it. That's what they say, right? There's a new person, not you, Machu, Machu Dennison, Thomas Pearson, all of you guys, good night and good night. And then there's Bula Lunk Simon. <laughs> oh, good night to you. Good night to you. Bula, is it Bula? All right. Rochelle Johnson, good night. Andrea Paradise, Corinne Day, Lawrence James, Glenford W. John. Uh, Gordon, sorry. All of you guys. I can't call all the names. Dorcas, Sylvia, Allen, Joyce, Every single one of you, good night and good night. And Wayne Caesar is with us as well. Brenda Casey, good night to you, Brenda Casey. All right. Good night to all of you. So we're going to rock and roll this evening. And uh, Lorraine Garnett, every single one of you. Hey, guess what, guys? You know, uh, we have our guest, uh, Mr. Roysdale Ford, please. You know, we encourage a, a positive debate. Um, it's okay to disagree and so forth. But we're going to keep it respectful in the uh, comment section. Uh, in a democracy, some are for, some are against, but argue your case properly. And let's not uh, have any derogatory, any disrespect of Mr. Ford if you disagree with him. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I'm saying fair enough. Do it in a nice, respectful manner. Hey, before we bring Mr. Ford on, he's already in studio with us. Uh, let me just quickly play a minute or two of what they have done to Antidata. You guys heard the news, right? This is Antidata. Uh, for you, you guys already know. This is Auntie Dot. Yeah, my name is Jasniti Kaldata, Francis T. Vietnam. And since 1965, I become a footer. And I always place my ex next to the cup. And what they are doing today, I can't take it. So I have no more vote to give to PPP anymore. I'm not going to vote anymore in the moon. If they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by data. You know, Auntie Data says, if they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by data. One, one vote, they're losing it by data. And so the PPP regime, they're targeting Auntie Data and her family. Again, I repeat, they're targeting Auntie Data and her family. Before we get to that, though, um, uh, before, sorry, before we get to our guest, sorry, as I said, before we get to our guest, Mr. Roysdale Ford, uh, we are just going to give you a little piece of what occurred earlier today, and we'll go straight to Antidata. Data on the line right now uh, to talk about what has happened in terms of victimization. Antidata, how are you? Good night. Good night. Yeah. I'm trying to be okay and what not to the best because of what is in me right now. Explain the situation. Explain the situation. What's going on with you right now, please? Right now, I met my friends, and the engineer came with the sergeant of Sansusi Station, the inspector of Sansusi Station, and the neighborhood police of Sansusi Station, along with four guys working on 
IRP, the reading load, and a net five, but the other one, I don't know him. They came and they break down the fence Tuesday. I was not at home, my son was not at home. When I get the call and I read, they were already finished, break down. I then asked the engineer, under what condition you came here and break down this fence? Where are the documents you come with? In our answer me, they say I have a transport, I pay tax. They say me not pay nine year tax. I said, can you prove that me not pay? I have all my receipts. He said my transport not valid. Then the inspector asked me to take it to the station. I did tell them I'm not going to station nowhere. They want to see my documents come in front of my house. I will show you. But they go away and when my son come and he come and tell me, let me carry the documents. Then where do we go? And they'll see it. And then he claimed, the engineer claimed, um, what is what the minister again? I know what the minister name is. Indar. Indar. Indar tell you to come and break it. I said, Indar tell you under what condition? Did he give you a written document to come and break my fence? So how, how long have you been living in that area, Auntie Data, and, and, and the fence? The transport shows that the yes. fence belongs to you? Yes, it's 13 years now um, I'm here. I since um. 2013, I came here and live. Since 2013. So what they did to the fence? I noticed that this matter has been going on since last year, February. Since last year, the 9th of February, the matter is going on. And they may break off the fence. The sergeant from the sun, to see he get transferred. And he did come and pull out the post and while we were doing it. And we make it back, then, then this come here Tuesday and they pull it back again. And Tuesday, that was a couple of days ago, they actually did that. Yeah, yeah, day before yesterday, day before yesterday, and what, they did that. What, what is your take now that they're, they're directly targeting you, uh, which is obviously illegal? Uh, do you think this is politically well, motivated? Yes, yes, yes. It's because of what I have said, as you, you have it on the um, the TV. All right, welcome here uh, to Straight Up. My name is Mark Benshaw. Uh, good night to all of you, wherever you are. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you guys back again, uh, every single one of you. Let's get straight down to business. We see right here Brenda Casey St. Jagdale and his Jagabats should be ashamed to target Antidata. They're bullies and are going to pay dearly for their crimes. Couldn't agree with you more, uh, Miss Casey. Mr. Ford, um, attorney at law, senior counsel, member of parliament, um, shadow minister of legal affairs, Good night, sir, and welcome to Straight Up. Let's begin right off the bat. Your take on what's happening to Antidata, sir. Good night, Mark, and good night to your audience in Guyana and around the world. Um, Mark, I actually met Antidata. I actually know this lady. Um, she's a warm and lovely lady. Uh, we were in an outreach, and we actually met her. I was actually there when she made this recording. Um, at the time, she indicated to us that she was suffering a lot of discrimination. Um, at the hands of the PPP officials in her area. Um, I believe that she is committed to seeing the back of the PPP. And this is very unfortunate. This is how the PPP treats with dissent and persons who they consider their property and persons who they believe are committed and must vote for them. But we are going to stand with Auntie Data. I plan to go back to her community within the next two weeks. And I certainly will meet with her again and provide her any support that she may need. All right, she does need some support. They went to Georgetown looking for a lawyer, and I'm glad that you've mentioned that, Mr. Ford, and I do hope that you guys can see whatever it is that can be done legally uh, for her. She deserves uh, She deserves all the help possible. She doesn't deserve what she's getting from the PPP. Shame and disgrace. Shame, shame to the PPP. Auntie Data. Yeah, my name is Jasniti Kaldata, Francis C. Vietnam, and... Since 1965, I become a voter, and I always place my ex next to the cop. And what they are doing today, I can't take it. So I have no more vote to give to PPP anymore. I'm not going to vote anymore no more. If they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by data. I have. 
Yeah, my name is Jasniti Kaldata, Francis Vietnam. And since 1965, I become a footer. And I always place my ex next to the cup. And what they are doing today, I can't take it. So I have no more vote to give to PPP anymore. I'm not going to vote anymore in the moon. If they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by data. If they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by data. Welcome to all of you. And this is straight up attorney at law, senior counsel, Roysdale Ford is with us. Roysdale Ford uh, is with us this evening. Sorry about that. And uh, we are going to rock and roll. Again, let me say that it's okay to disagree. It's okay to agree. But let's keep it very respectful here uh, this evening, as I have been seeing here uh, tonight. And I thank you all so much for that. Uh, Mr. Roysdale Ford, uh, let's begin First of all, with I know you just came off of um, Mr. Shara Duncan's program, and, and you probably had a packed day. Here it is that you have to spend one hour with me on 107.1 FM. Uh, let's begin with Roysdale Ford. Uh, before we get into all of the questions, why you are running for leadership of the party, uh, how long you've been with the PNC and so forth. Before we get into all of that, Talk to us about a little background of Roysdale Ford, the little boy growing up in Guyana. Where are you from in Guyana? And how did you get involved into want, uh, wanting, sorry, to become a lawyer? Talk to us, please. Well, Mark, I grew up in Georgetown in the Kingston area. My father was a policeman, um, a retired senior police officer. Uh, my mother and my siblings, we all lived in Kingston at the Evlery compound. Um, so I... My formative years were, um, I attended the Stella Marish Primary School, St. Rose's High School, and then Bishop's High School. Um, being a lawyer was a childhood dream, and it was something that I worked towards achieving, uh, together with the support of my sisters, my brothers, and the wider family, my, my brothers particularly. And I was able to pursue it with the support of my family, uh, particularly because of the fact that there was free education available and provided for through the government and the PNC at the time, my family was able to ensure that I actually attended schools which uh, we were not um, having the sort of economic resources which would have allowed me to attend. Um, there's no way that my family could have afforded me to attend the Stella Maris Primary School, which is a private Catholic school, prior to um, the change of free the implementation of free education, and the same thing for Bishops and St. Rose's High School. So it is basically the family and the family values of placing education as extremely important and the circumstances which um, were created for me by my home. You know, somehow, Mark, people believe that today that I'm now a lawyer and a senior counselor, that I was born with the proverbial gold spoon or silver spoon. I come from a very ordinary, simple Guyanese family um, where we all suffered. We went through um, challenges, limitations. And um, we were able to bind together as a family, um, despite our own challenges, um, stick together with one another and support one another. And I'm who I am largely because of my family, uh, my mother and father and the siblings who would have supported me um, during the years. Uh, particularly, I think I benefit a lot from the experience of my siblings. I was, I'm the last of five children, so I was able to get a lot of support and nurturing from them. Well said, I noticed you got some uh, folks here sent roses to the world, Faye Ann Strap sends roses to the world indeed. All of you who have attended uh, or attended St. Roses, uh, here it is, you have one of your own. Also, you went off to bishops and uh, uh, talk, a, talk a little bit, you spoke about your upbringing, the, your siblings, your parents, and of course it wasn't uh, an easy road. A lot of us can relate to that. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your family, your wife and your uh, children. Um, sure. Let us know a little bit about your family. My wife is a lawyer. Um, I'm the father of children. They have attended um, the university abroad. Um, and they are all um, good children. I'm very proud of them. You would have mentioned some, some time ago, Mark, that my son would have graduated from university abroad. Uh, my daughter is currently engaging in um, university studies and the other one they're coming up. So they're all doing well. Um, they are a blessing. I believe that they are very good children. Um, you know, of course, as a parent, you have to always provide them with the sort of guidance and support. But what I'm trying to do, Mark, is to transfer 
the sort of trading and nurturing that I received um, onto them and the sort of values onto them. Well said, and thank you so much for being that father. And, uh, you know, our kids do need guidance and, and family plays a, a major part in their upbringing as well. Any of them wanting to follow your footstep and your wife's footstep as a lawyer? Yes, um, one of them, she's currently preparing and she is being guided by us in terms of how she should approach um, university entrance and what courses she should take. So we, we, we're working with that. Thank you. Is she gonna is she gonna want to become an immigration lawyer or I'm not sure as yet. <laughs> thank sure. you so much for it. Appreciate it. And to all of our listeners who have just joined us, thank you. Uh my good friend Wayne Caesar is in the audience tonight. He he allows me to do these interviews now, uh solo, but good night to you, Wayne. Uh Mr. Ford, you got involved in the PNC. Uh growing up as a little boy, you always thought that at one time or one day you will get involved in politics. Uh and of course, becoming a lawyer. Talk to us a little bit as to how you got actively involved in politics, sir. Well, Mark, you know, in the context of Guyana, your family tends to be either PNC or PPP. My family has been members and supporters of the PNC um, long before I was even born. Um, my early introduction or concept of the existence of the PNC was largely through my mother. She was a member of the PNC Kingston Group and I would tag along to meetings. Um, I was able to observe the camaraderie and support that the women and the general membership of that party group played. I was able to see their dedication in terms of work for the party, um, but I never really thought that I would have become actively involved um, in politics. Um, I always recognized the role of the party and what it would have done. And these were values also that my parents would discuss at home um, the role of the party, the vision of the PNC, how we would have impacted positively on the lives of ourselves, our siblings, our family, our cousins, and the nation at large. But my introduction to active um, politics came when I entered the legal profession, when one day Mr. McKay, um, who is now passed on, Senior Counsel McKay, asked me to go to see Mr. Hoyt um, in relation to some legal work for the party. As you know, Mr. McKay, was a long-standing um, advocate for human rights and for the affairs, particularly of the PNC. Um, so I went off to meet Mr. McKay, and that was when my adult aspect of involvement and work with the PNC began. All right, and let me just say before we uh, move further on that the first time I met you was in, I believe, officially in 2002, while I was in the prisoner's dock, that is, on a trumped-up treason charge. Um, I didn't know. I saw a bunch of lawyers just turned up, and there it is, young Ford was there. How did you get involved in the uh, in my treason trial? Mark, I believe that um, Mr. Hoyt at the time had indicated to me that um, I needed to get involved with this matter. This was a very serious um, charge that you were brought against. Mr. McKay encouraged me to play an active role in it. And at the same time, Mark, I was observing what was happening in the country at that time. I believe many persons really take it for granted that we have gotten to this stage, but those were very brutal years under the presidency of Barajagio. Jagdeo. I, I saw the levels of discrimination, um, the murders, the arrogance of government. And I believe that that was the environment in which I analyzed what was happening and I developed my own consciousness in terms of the role that I can play as a lawyer to make sure that the society is better. Um, I believe that at that time it formed the seeds of my own concept of the need for social justice and equality in society. And I believe that from then to now, um, I've never veered away from my belief and commitment in using my skill, my intellect um, as a lawyer to ensure that people have fair and an equal opportunity um, in this society. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time and appreciate uh, your service uh, pro bono during those trying times, especially those uh, those years having to go through uh, an unjust system there. Um, and I appreciate your input as we move on. Good night to all of you who have joined us on this live tonight. Uh, Mr. Royce Ford, 
uh, we will get to the bottom of still why Mr. Roy Steelford believes that he will make a good leader of the People's National Congress reform. Um, and let me just assure you, this is not the show where uh, people will be bashing other people within the PNC, that is, I'm talking about, I'm not inviting people here to bash other people, you, you know what I mean, yes. So Mr. Ford is gonna get straight to the point here now. Uh, before we get to that though, how would you describe the country right now as it pertains to cost of living? Mark, the, the cost of living is completely out of control. Um, the salaries that are being paid are wages that cannot sustain individuals, much less families. Um, the basic costs of items are out of the roof. Um, when you go to the market area, um, people are not capable of purchasing essentials for their families. Um, it affects the ability of families to look after their children, um, be able to look after health care for themselves. And the, 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 the salary that is being provided through the government, particularly for public service employees, is completely insufficient. It cannot sustain that. You know, we see Commissioner Cole is saying here slave wages. But as we move on to that, uh, 500, 500 Bangladeshis are expected to go into Guyana as a result of the PVPC regime. We know it's going to be in their thousands. But what is your take on this installed regime, leaving CARICOM, leaving those nurses or young people at home who can become nurses, but they're going all the way to Bangladesh? What is your take on that, Mr. Ford? Mark, that, that, that is a very reprehensible course of conduct that is being employed by the government. I, I believe that we must first look to see what would have caused that. The government has failed to put in place the sort of salaries and fiscal support, the sort of monetary support to ensure that those nurses remain in Guyana. So I believe, Mark, that what the government has actually done was to create an enable environment to cause the nurses to leave in the first place. I believe from January to now, hundreds of nurses would have departed from Guyana. You would have seen, I hope, the arrogance displayed by Irfan Ali when confronted by an international media, international journalists in relation to the, 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 the need and what has been happening in the country in terms of nurses leaving. So, Mark, what, what has happened first is that the government has actually created the environment for nurses to leave. We saw that even within Guyana, the nurses would have closed down um, they, would, they would have closed down schools, um, nursing schools in Linden. Um, they would have restricted the entry um, and the ability of persons to enter the nursing profession. So that is what is happening at that level. That is what I consider the circumstances and the enable environment that would make them be in a position to announce to the public that they intend to bring nurses from Bangladesh. But moving beyond that, Mark, what is really happening now is that the government has built from that foundation and is now seeking to establish a regime that would bring nurses in. I believe bringing these nurses in, these persons from Bangladesh, is also meant to be a sort of support for them politically. I believe they expect that these persons will vote for them. Now, Mark, throughout the Caribbean, I don't believe that the government would have marketed the, the posts available for nurses. There'd be no plan by the government to attract nurses from the Caribbean. So I believe this is part of their whole plot, ultimately to seek to get votes Ultimately, that is what they're trying to do here, Mark. Just to get votes indeed, and uh, lots of folks have been complaining, and we see the evidence that the voters list is heavily blotted with probably close to 200,000 extra persons. We don't know the exact figure, but how concerned are you? Um, and what are you doing in your position as Shadow Minister of Legal Affairs and as Shadow Minister of Attorney General, uh, Shadow Attorney General, sorry. What is it that you're doing from your standpoint on behalf of your party? In relation to what, man? Relations to the bloated list and your uh, positions approach to GCAM. Well, Mark, we have, well, individually, I have um, indicated to the party that I believe that we need to consider what is happening, that I believe that we need to review the legislation that would have been brought into Parliament. A few weeks, a few months ago, Mark, the government would have brought legislation which was actually capable of promoting the list promoting persons going onto the list in a, in a sort of a manner that is a very sort of free for all. They would have enacted legislation which would have seen nurses, um, they would have seen nurses coming into the country to go onto the list. They would have allowed a system which would have allowed the Venezuelans to enter onto the list. There's no mechanism now, Mark, by which we could really determine who's entering the list. 
onto the list. The system has been watered down so badly right now. But if any person could simply claim that they're Guyanese or they've got Guyanese ancestry, have a person swear um, a commission of oath stamp and affidavit, and that forms the basis for them becoming um, registered as a citizen of Guyana. Once that happens, they move, move directly onto the list. This is a very unacceptable system. It goes towards establishing, again, that the PPP is not interested in having a credible electoral system and a credible electoral list. You know, Mr. Ford, uh, before we get into the question as to uh, your your ability as uh, as you vie to become the leader of the People's National Congress, we'll get into that shortly. But before that, let's talk about the blockouts throughout the country every single day, uh, blockouts upon blockouts, and the fact that this installed PVP regime always throw the blame of these things on the coalition. Uh, how do you feel about that? And what do you think Guyanese should be doing in terms of at least even to protest the blockouts? We're not seeing anything of that nature. But what is your take on the constant blockouts and the mismanagement of GPL? Mark, the PPP would always want to blame the PNC for all the failures in, this, in the country. But I believe that this is one where there's no basis whatsoever. It's purely a political um, argument being mounted by the PPP. In relation to the blockouts, it is affecting the entire country. Um, the government would have promised repeatedly that they would be bringing in the generators, they would have been ending the blockouts, um, and they're not doing so. The machines, the, the generators that they would have brought into the country, they're either old or incapable of solving the problem. You would have seen uh, Mr. Patterson would have come out a few days ago outlining what would have happened under the, the PNC or the APNO AFC government, the state of the affairs of the GPL, and the fact that what is happening now is that the government, both at an institutional level and in terms of human resource capacity, is not capable of addressing the issues. In terms of what needs to be done, Mark, I believe that the Guyanese people need to come out and protest. They need to come out and say more forcefully that this is an unacceptable state of affairs. You know, uh, forcibly go out and protest and so forth. That's what people want, and that's what people expected in terms of the uh, confrontation, peaceful confrontation against the PVP regime. We're not seeing that, but I see a question here from Piri. Piri is saying, Mark, he did not explain how they're going to stop the criminal PVP from using that bloated list. Now, you're a lawyer. You're a senior counsel. You've been around for years. You've won all these cases on behalf of your party. But... I agree with Piri Piri. From a legal standpoint, what do you guys prepare to do to prevent GCOM from going into the next elections with a bloated list, senior counsel? Mark, in relation to this matter, it's not just a legal issue that has to be dealt with here. We all know what is a legal issue. Um, I believe that there's the question of the role of the list in the society, but it's also a question as to the general development of a momentum uh, by the opposition in terms of fostering the sort of awareness that is necessary. Um, I believe that we also have to institute legal proceedings at the appropriate time under the direction of the leadership of the party. We need to challenge the list in court and be able to ensure that that list is not used. Um, I've written just today about the use of biometrics, which would be able to play a role in affecting the ability of persons to use a bloated list but underlying that issue, Mark, is the question of persons being able to go on the list. What is ultimately needed, Mark, is a complete new um, voters list. I believe that under the direction of the party, because I can't make that decision as I stand right now, as an individual, as an individual member, but I believe that that would have to be a party decision. And I'm of the view that we need to challenge the list as being incapable of constituting the basis for a credible, fair, electoral process you know uh commissioner cole has a good uh, point here the list is rigged we all know that uh we shouldn't wait until elections time to start to make some noise uh, concerning this rigged list i agree again with commissioner cole here uh any party going into elections with dub with dub bloated list is unique uniquely stup id uniquely stup id and you know the thing is a lot of people a lot of people don't expect the opposition to accept that bloated list. And I'm glad that to some extent you have, you have explained that process. Um, I noticed I'm looking in the comment section here. 
um, I'm looking the, because I want to get involved the um, the audience as well so that they can this is an interactive session I noticed uh, Sherwin Green is preempting this question. We want to know, and Sherwin, <laughs> okay, I noticed the question. We want to know what he has planned for civil disobedience if he becomes opposition leader. We will get to that question soon, Mr. Uh, Sherwin Green. We will get to that question. We haven't asked him yet about why he wants to become leader or why he's running to become leader of the party. But, hey, it's 39 minutes after 9 o'clock. Let's get straight to that question. Mr. Roysdale A. Ford, Senior Counsel, Member of Parliament, Shadow Minister of Legal Affairs, and Shadow Attorney General. You have announced recently, and people have been following, people expected that. But now, uh, again, you get the opportunity since you have officially made your announcement on 107.1 FM now tonight. Explain to the people why you throw your hat in the race and why should people, why should members of the party trust you enough to hand the leadership over to you? Explain in details for us, please. Well, Mark, the decision to contest for the leadership of the People's National Congress reform was not a light one. I considered it for a number of months um, and I thought about it carefully. Mark, when we look to see where the party is at right now and the sort of leadership that has been delivered to the party, I believe that the members of the party need to seriously take stock of what is happening. Um, we have what I consider to be a rabid and rampant and unyielding government. Um, they're not capable of striking compromises. They're not in a position of negotiating. They're not capable of acting within the ambit of the rule of law. We have a situation, Mark, where um, significant numbers of the population not necessarily only members of our party who are suffering continuously by virtually discriminatory policies. We see, despite all the oil well that is happening in the country, that the government is allocating it largely to capital projects, for which, in the relation to those projects, they are allocating almost all the contracts to what the party has termed to be their friends, family, and favorite. A lot of discrimination is passing. Mark, when we see what has been the response of the party over the past two years, I believe that the party has failed to come up with a plan to address the issue. Mark, you, you would have mentioned earlier, I saw you would have referred to the fact that one of your members of your audience asked about civil disobedience. I believe that in the whole armory of a political party, civil disobedience is an essential and legitimate weapon to be utilized. I believe that we could all agree that that has not been a tool that would have been utilized by our party sufficiently, or some may say at all. I believe that in the context of what is happening in Guyana, it is a legitimate process. When we go back to the early years post-2000 mark, we would have seen the role that civil disobedience played under the leadership of Mr. Desmond Hoy. We would have been able to see the fact that that mechanism and the utilization of that weapon would have been able to hold the PPP back. I believe that now, in the absence of the utilization of that weapon, the PPP is running amok. Um, the members and supporters of the PNC are largely left unprotected. I believe that the citizens, even their supporters of the PPP, are now open game. You would have seen what is happening with anti data You would have seen the level of discrimination. You would have seen the inequalities that are happening in the society. I believe when we look internally at the state of the party, as I have considered it, and I've made it my uh, slogan that the party itself needs to regroup, refocus, and rebuild. It needs that mean that we mean to come together, reflect on where we are, engage in an honest process of self-assessment. And we could not consider that we are at an, any appropriate stage. We need to whip out the report and make an assessment as to whether, as being a member of the party over the last two years, you have been in a better position. But as a support of the party, you're in a better position. But the country is in a better place. And I believe that when you do these things, we engage in this sort of objective assessment, we will come to a conclusion that we are not in a better state. The PPP continues to ride rough shot uh, through the country. They continue to do whatever they want to do. And the essential element that is missing in, in, in the general society right now 
is an open level of, of contempt by the citizens for the government. We are not, not seeing that sort of response. And I believe that the political party of which I have a member has an obligation to lead the citizens of the country and to provide that sort of response to the government. You know, Mr. Ford, let's go to the questions here, and I will take a lot of questions from the audience. We have one here, and this is a fair question, um, and for you to be straight up with this one here, Joy Hopkinson is saying, it is a known fact, or it's known facts, according to Joy here, that you and others refuse and keep refusing to work with the current leader, Mr. Aubrey Norton. Please answer that question directly, please. Mark. That is part of what is being bandied about, but there's nothing further from the truth. I believe the fact that Mr. Aubrey Norton won the leadership of the PMC in 2020, 2021, I went to him, I congratulated him, and I committed to work with him, and I've been working with him. Um, I believe that the track record and what I would have been doing over the past two years as a member of the parliament, as a shadow attorney general, is not Royce Dale Ford doing it for myself. Many of the cases that I would have been instituted would have been after consultation and at the request of the very leader, Mr. Aubrey Norton. Up to today, I had a call from Mr. Norton. We had we discussed the issue of um, the same electoral list. We considered some views on it. Um, we discussed um, the role of biometrics. So this sort of um, portrayal that myself um, and others, a lot of members of the party have abandoned Aubrey Norton as far as from the truth. I believe that Mr. Norton cannot identify, at least for me, anything that he would have asked me to do and I didn't do. So the fact that I am now seeking to be elected as the leader of the party must not be taken as the fact that I would have withdrawn my support from him. I believe every year over the last two years, a significant number of legal cases I would have filed, um, many times directly against the government, fighting against the government, fighting for, on behalf of the ordinary citizens of the party and in the party's interest. So I believe that that statement um, is part of the general propaganda that is being circulated and there's no substance or truth in it. All right, we go to another question. Uh, and of course, uh, this is if you're elected leader. Um, we go to Brenda Casey's question here. What would Mr. Ford do to stop the folks from Venezuela, Bangladesh, and others entering Guyana from not being able to be on the voters list? And that's a that's quite a good question in regards with regards to persons hopping into Guyana and then suddenly they are on the voters list. Please. Mark, um, I, I believe that we must first recognize that under the constitution, and this is that this has been there for many years, from even from the point of independence, and all the Commonwealth countries have this provision. Where I believe it's Article 30 or 37 around there of the Constitution, 50 something of the Constitution, whereby Commonwealth citizens, once they enter Guyana lawfully, they are allowed to vote after a year or two years. I believe, as a matter of government policy, I believe that we should not allow citizens to enter foreigners to enter Guyana, even though they're Commonwealth citizens to enter Guyana. I believe that we must first focus inwards in terms of providing resources, skills, and training force for um, Guyanese people. So I do not believe that we should allow persons to enter the country and then go onto the voters list. Uh, in relation to the Venezuelans, I am very concerned. I must say that I'm very concerned about the sort of laser free and liberal approach that the government would have adopted allowing persons to, from Venezuela to enter Guyana. Um, I, we did, there's no um, sort of visa policy. There's no sort of restriction. There's no sort of analysis, I believe, in terms of who's entering the country. I believe that the law that simply allows a person to claim Guyanese citizenship by swearing, that by themselves swearing that they are Guyanese of a Guyanese ancestry need to be repealed. And I believe more importantly, in terms of what is happening in the country, in terms of the allocation of resources, there's an urgent need for immigration reform. We need to put in place modern legislation that would restrict the persons from entering Guyana at this stage. You know, one of the things, um, when you announced your, uh, well, of course, you made it official, your intention uh, to run for leadership of the party, 
Um, they were, of course, the current leader, Mr. Aubrey Norton, actually um, actually hinted that maybe your group would be more uh, pro PPP or working or or some sort of um, relationship with the PPP. Uh, can you explain that, please? I, Mark, I can't explain that because it's a very irrational statement. It's a statement that has no truth to it. Again, you know, Mark, one of the problems with the People's National Congress reform, um, as exemplified by the statement there by the leader, Mr. Aubrey Norton, is that how we, how we deserve uh, to push our people away, how we decide that we will make statements, which I believe is not in the best interest of the party. Mark, if you want to engage in an analysis, as I said, in relation to me, I believe that I have a soundtrack record of showing that I'm fighting against um, the PNC. Mark Parsons would have come up to me and be asking me a number of questions. For example, similarly, the Guyanese people and members of the party want to know why is it that the party would have taken a soft position on the natural resource fund, on the allocation of resources, People draw their own conclusions in relation to what you're doing or what you're not doing. But I believe that that is a very um, irrational statement. It's a statement that has no truth and no substance to it. You know, for a long period, Mark, and this is one of the things that I want to point out to the membership of the party and to point out to the citizens of this country, particularly the members of the party. We seek to demonize and paint persons as being PPP simply because they have a different view within the context of the party. The party is founded on democratic principles, which include the freedom of expression, the freedom of ability to dissent, and to articulate it a different position. So once you come up and you announce that you may have a different position, you may have a different philosophical position than where the party is going, you're denounced as a PPP. But I believe that at this time, the, the citizens and the members of the party are more alert. They're engaging in an analysis and I believe that the question and use of self-assessment and a report card a, approach as to whether you're better off, whether your party's functioning, ought to be the basis of making the choices as to who should be the next leader of the party, rather than crazy statements which are not founded in fact. All right, uh, 51 minutes after, 51 minutes after uh, nine o'clock, I noticed some, some folks are asking you, questions and it's good. Sherwin Green, good night to you, my friend. <laughs> good night indeed to all of you and John and uh, so so true Hector, everyone. Notice I'm taking questions from you guys here in the audience. Mr. Ford, there is this belief that the party is fractured, uh, heavily divided, and um, there are many against Aubrey, there are many for Aubrey, all manner of things. Uh, is there a fraction, a divided PNC right now? And if so, what will you do as leader, if elected leader, to bridge that gap and bring the people together? Mark, um, I would not deny that there are differences which sometimes seem to run over and out of the party. At many times, you would have seen it over the last two days, particularly um, the responses back and forth. Um, the need to per person's own personal view to believe that it they should come out and make these public statements. But Mark, you know, from the time I would have made my announcement, I've indicated publicly that it is my view that the party keep its business inside, that the party focus on policies over personalities. And I believe that it was very unfortunate that less than an hour after I made that statement, um, I started to promote where the party should be going in terms of its approach the issues and the question of unity that the leader of the opposition, the leader of the party came out with a very concerning statement in which sought to place me as a being against the party. Um, so, so, so that is one of the issues I want to make very clear. The unity of the party, as we all would agree, is fundamental. It is essential to the party. But Mark, I believe that in approaching the question of unity, it has to be based on a question of mutual respect. And in the context of the party, in terms of unity, I believe it has to be a unity within the party's constitution. You, you can't have a unified party as a party as large as the People's National Congress reform when there is not compliance with the processes within the party. That would be the source of a number of 
disagreements and anger, um, a dissension. For example, Mark, I believe that it is public knowledge that the period for the holding of a of a um, gay party congress would have expired. I believe internally the party democratic structure has not complied with what has been set out in the party's constitution. I believe that there's need to have um, regular internal regional elections. I believe that, that those things would have not have happened um, in most of the regions in the party. Um, there are allegations by some that um, the leader and the leadership is seeking to divide the party. Those are views that are being expressed. But for me, Mark, I believe that what is required at this time is that we need to come up with an arrangement where we first seek to address the issue by seeking to have persons gather, um, develop mechanisms to resolve disputes within the party. We need to have to go out into the community, Mark, and really sit in the party groups and resolve the issues that confront the party. I believe we need to bring persons who would have walked away from the party. I believe a significant number of persons would have walked away from the party. Um, the last, the leader was elected on a platform of unity. He was elected on a platform of being capable of bringing persons who would have left the party back. I believe that little or no significant um, progress would have been made in that regard. Now, let me ask you if, and you're contesting these elections to become the leader of the People's National Congress, we don't know when that Congress is going to be held, but the leader did say on numerous occasions that it's going to be held by August 31st, no date set as yet. If Mr. Aubrey Norton is re-elected as leader of the People's National Congress reform, would you offer him your 100% support, sir? I have, I will when he was elected in 2021, and I will continue to do so if he's elected in 2024. If you are elected leader of the People's National Congress reform, do you see yourself as the next presidential candidate in the upcoming elections? Mark, once again, that is one of the issues I believe that we need to resolve. And what would be the mechanism for identifying such a person? I, I believe that the time has long gone where necessarily the leader of the party must be the presidential candidate. I believe that we need to put in place a mechanism. I believe that the, the role of a primary is an essential tool that can be utilized. It was utilized before to identify the most suitable and appropriate and attractive person to be the presidential candidate. I do not believe that because necessarily you are the leader of the party that you have some prior right, some God-given right to necessarily be the presidential candidate. I believe that we need to come up with modern mechanisms, modern approaches that will seek to have persons involved, and that in itself will maintain the unity and the structure of the party. You know, let's let's go to a question here. I noticed Mr. Leeton Charles. Uh, good night to you, um, Mr. Charles. He says, as an individual who has the goods to be an excellent AG, and nobody can disagree with that, an excellent attorney general indeed, what have you done to make people convinced I uh, know Mr. Leeton Charles might just have been joining us here now, but his question, oh, what, what have you done to make people convinced that you should be the next leader of the People's National Congress reform? He has admitted that you'll make an excellent attorney general, but what have you, what have you done to convince, to make people convinced that you will be uh, the next, or that you should be the next leader, sorry, of the People's National Congress reform? Mark, I, I believe that when we, make assessments that we should not make it on emotion. As I pointed out, Mark, I believe that I have, based on what Mr. Leeton Charles said there, and I accept, um, I'm very grateful for his compliment and I thank him for it, but I believe based on inherently what he would have said there is the fact that I would have performed credibly uh, over the period, I would have been able to discharge my responsibilities. Mark, being the leader of the People's National Congress reform, requires you to engage in a commitment to the people, to demonstrate your support for the Guyanese people, the ability to fight and stand for them. I believe what I've been doing over the last two years is largely that. I believe that being the leader of the People's National Congress reform will be in just another stage, another manifestation in which I'll be able to utilize those skills that I will have demonstrated to lead the party forward. All right, it's uh, 59 minutes, 59 minutes after, after 
Um, I, I, I see all most of your comments. Uh, a lot of them are favorable. Some of them are, are critical, but yet constructive. And I respect that. You know, they got a question here from Jason Benjamin. And I, uh, good night to you, Jason. And I want you, you're the lawyer. Maybe you can uh, school some of us here. Uh, Mr. Benjamin is saying, hey, wait a minute. Uh, the, uh, isn't the party's constitution the guiding principle slash book for the for all its members, uh, that's what he's saying here. Why did you, Mr. Ford, announce your intention to run for office before a date was announced by the CEC? So we're waiting for a date to be announced by the CEC. Uh, answer Jason's question here if you get it, please. Well, well, good night, Jason. I'm happy for your question. And I would point out to you that nowhere in the party's constitution does it state that you can only indicate your intention to be run or to be nominated and to run for the leadership or any post in the party, that it must happen after a date has been set by the CEC. If the leader of the party has announced that we're going to have Congress by a particular date, I don't believe that there's any rule in the party um, constitution which prohibits a member from the party from indicating that they would like to run for the, any position, including the leadership of the party. So I don't believe that there is any correlation between my announcement and my indication that I would like to run. Um, I, I would pose the same question to, to Mr. Benjamin, and you will see the sort of um, thought process. Um, I believe that a few weeks ago, Mr. Norton announced that he will be the presidential candidate. But really and truly, um, the party's process and the party's constitution does not indicate that necessarily the leader of the party is the presidential candidate. But Mr. Norton went out to Linden and announced that he's going to be the presidential candidate. Um, should he not have done awaited a decision by the party processes? So I believe that we need to be more open-minded. We need to move some of the cobweb um, that surrounds what we consider to be rules that are not rules. You know, uh, I noticed a comment from a Ms. Hopkinson, uh, maybe 22 minutes uh, uh, prior to now, and is talking uh, about photographs and you and some PPP guys, uh, ministers shaking hands. I mean, uh, we have seen photographs of other members of the opposition shaking hands with PPP members. We have seen our current, the current leader of the People's National Congress playing Pagua with some PPP members. Do you think it's a fair justification to attack someone because of shaking a hands or greeting PPP members or uh, officials, sorry? Mark, I believe that um, the, the whole idea which seemed to have germinated um, over the past um, two years or so commenced with the current leader of the party refusing to shake the president's hand. Uh, Mark, our party has always had a tradition of be having strong leaders and providing strong leadership. I would take, I would take your, your audience back and the country back. Let, let us look at the night of the independence. Forbes Burnham and Chetty Jagan embraced and hugged each other. Throughout the years, we all know it's legendary, whether by fact or fable, of the close relationship that existed between Mr. Burnham and Mr. Jagan. But they could have been two, no, two, they could not have been two persons who wanted to maintain dominance in the political environment than themselves. We saw, um, by way of fact, um, Chetty Jagan Jr. saying that Forbes Burnham was his godfather. So I, I, I find it ridiculous to conclude that simply shaking a member of the, op of the opposing party or the government's hand, that you have somehow crossed the Rubicon and become a PPP. You have become um, a suspect member of the PNC. The PNC has a strong political party. Shaking Irfan Ali hand or whoever's hands don't change um, the dynamics of what is happening in this country. It don't shake, change the, 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 the focus and the commitment that I have. No one has ever asked me in relation to any picture, including the picture that they threw up um, from time to time with me shaking um, Irfan Ali hands, what I was telling him at the time. That was at the residence of the American ambassador. And I was telling Irfan Ali to his face that his conduct and his management of the country is unacceptable, is discriminatory. I could hold his hand and I could tell him that in his face. So, so, so we need to move the party away from this nonsense. 
there's, there's, there's no rational basis for it. So Ms. Hopkinson should ask herself, should we just on the basis of the fact that Mr. Aubrey Norton, the lead, currently leader of the party, would have paid Abu and touch up Nandalal face with, with a beard, does that necessarily disentitle him from the leadership of the party? So where is the rationale and lens of suspicion to be directed and drawn upon whom? These are, these are some of the things, Mark, which, is, which has crept into the mindset of the party, which needs to be disabused, discarded, and thrown away completely. All right. Thank you so much for that response. Let me just say uh, one of our members of the audience, Francine Cruz. Uh, um, Francine, if you can please uh, tone it down a bit and uh, be a little bit respectful to Ms. Brenda Casey. We'd appreciate it. We do not want Francine Cruz. We do not want to use the donkey on you this evening. Please, let's not go that route. Appreciate it, Francine. Let's agree to disagree and respect each other. And I hope this message sinks in, Francine. Appreciate it, ma'am. Yeah, sorry about that, Mr. Uh, Ford. As we prepare to wrap up tonight's program, though, we are not going just yet. I still have a couple more questions. I've been feeling questions from the audience. Um, then the next question concerning the holding of Congress. Mr. Aubrey Norton has been saying for a while now that Congress will be held by August 31st. Is that satisfactory? And if it's not, what is it that the members of the Central Executive Committee, of which I believe you're a member, uh, what are you guys doing to prepare for the party's Congress? Mark, as far as I'm aware, um, the Central Executive of the party has not formally um, establish a Congress committee, which by tradition and convention is the institution and the forum um, to decide ultimately on a date, to decide ultimately on the mechanisms that will be put in place. I expect that in view of the fast approaching date of the 31st of August, which seems to be an outside date as announced um, by the leader, um, without the clear um, statement by the CEC or by the general counsel that the general counsel or the CEC will soon have to engage in that process to determine the date and to put in place the modalities and the mechanisms for the holding of um, the Congress. Uh, you know, recently we've seen um, a, a few members attacking former General Secretary Ms. Amna Ali. Uh, do you believe that those attacks were justified? Mark, I don't believe that the attacks were justified. I do. I believe that no attack by a member of the PNC to any member of the PNC is justified. I believe that Ms. Ali, as an individual and as a member of the PNC, is PNC to the bone. I believe the fact that you would co could come out, and I believe that uh, my colleague MP, the, the chairman, um, Sherwin Holder, clearly got it wrong. I believe that it was unacceptable for him to come out and to make that sort of statement against Ms. Ali. You may want to have your own views on Ms. Ali, but at the end of the day, she has been a stalwart of the party, as many other persons. I believe that we need to be very careful. We need to be very cautious in not making reckless statements and inflammatory statements against the members of our own party. You know, quickly before we go, though, how do you guys meet as a team? Because the general public and, and, and those who support the party, those who are members of the party, those who want to see uh, the party uh, victorious, uh, of course, by a coalition at the next elections, are concerned whether um, there are regular meetings uh, with the CEC, with members of parliament, to iron out differences. Uh, how often do you guys meet, all of you, as members of parliament? With the leader mark I, I believe that we don't meet enough um, i believe that that is one of the issues is one of the concerns that i have um, as a party i believe moving beyond the party itself i believe that it is a concern in relation to the entire coalition you need to meet regularly you need to chart a clear and definitive way forward and in doing so mark as i mentioned earlier you remove a lot of the potential sources of disunity um, you bring persons in and you create and resolve issues by way of consensus. You know, Mr. Ford, there are some folks who don't know you, uh, but have this impression of you that you are not 
grassroots enough and that you do not relate directly to the ordinary folks. Uh, you want to respond to that, please? Well, well Mark, that is furthest from the truth. Um, I believe that, um, as I mentioned earlier, this whole concept that Royce Dale Ford is elite um, flows largely from the fact that I'm a lawyer. It flows largely from the fact that there is a presumption, which is not based on anything, um, that I'm a senior counsel and therefore I'm so removed from people. I have spent my life so far um, among and with the ordinary people of the country. I may not have put up pictures on Facebook. I may not have um, projected it as a issue, but any person who's known, who will know me would know that I am committed to the life of being a Guyanese person, of being an ordinary person. I am constantly concerned and worried about the state of affairs in the country. I am particularly perturbed about the economic conditions which affect our people, which affect our membership of the party. I'm particularly concerned that the party has not up to now at this time developed mark. And this is what I'm particularly concerned, develop up to now a program, an independent party driven program to address the economic conditions of its members and by extension its supporters. I believe that the government has all the resources that are available by way of oil and the oil budget, but I believe that the party has an obligation to put in place an economic plan and program um, to address the needs of the people independently of the government. You may not be able to do it um, at the level of what a government can do, but I believe that that is a key defect um, despite it was promised um, to be done. It is certainly something that I would work on to ensure that our people have some sort of independent economic source and buffer from this unrelenting government. You know, Mr. Ford, uh People want to see boots on the ground, leaders who are going to be out there with their supporters, who are going to take this uh, corrupt, this illegal regime on. Uh, would you be, if elected, would you be that kind of a leader that will take on directly the PPP regime with boots on the ground? Or are you going to be one of those air-conditioned leaders or one of those who just uh, issue press releases? Uh, what sort of leader would you be to represent not only the supporters of the PPP and um, the supporters of the PNC, but supporters of the PPP who are dissatisfied with what's happening in the country in order to have a unified opposition and a unified country in booting the PPP out of office? How different would you be? Mark, I would be radically different from what is happening now. You know, Mark, you would recall, and I hope the Guyanese public would recall, um, that one of the persons that was probably concluded and would have been said to be um, an elite, um, they really don't want them around, they're very distant, they're very insensitive. But in the past 30 years or so, the most effective leader, um, I believe, that we would have had in terms of civil disobedience would have been a lawyer, would have been Desmond Hoyt himself. Um, who would have walked the streets as a senior counsel, um, who would have walked the streets as a political leader, and would have delivered that sort of leadership that is necessary. I am committed. I'm not afraid of the police. I will never run from the police. I won't duck from the police. I will stand up and leave because it is my obligation and duty once elected. If the leadership of the party decides that they want to go that way, I will be there with them. But Mark, we have to reflect and be objective. We were told that there would be boots on the ground. We were told that we would be confronting this government. And as I started out at the commencement of our conversation this evening, we could say what we want to say, Mark, but that has not happened. And I believe that is why I'm asking the members of the party and the supporters to engage in a process of self-assessment. That is what elections are about. Elections is not a fashion show. It's not a personality contest. You don't have to like me. But I want you to understand that in making your assessment, I will deliver on what is needed in the society at this time. All right, Mr. Royce Ford, at 13 minutes after 10 o'clock. Uh, and let me just have the members of the audience know that 
Uh, we appreciate all of your comments, your participation, those who are for, those who are against, those who are in the middle. Uh, thank you all so much for that. But before you go, talk directly to the supporters, uh, members who have cards and are preparing to vote whenever Congress is held before August 31st. Uh, again, reiterate, why should people vote for Roysdale A. Ford as leader of the People's National Congress reform? Talk about your plans. Mark, I, I believe that, um, as I said earlier, the party is at a very serious place at this time. I believe that having traveled throughout most of the length and breadth of the countries in the regions, I have heard the party members' positions. Um, they are concerned about the lack of unity in the party. They are concerned about the lack of militancy and vibrancy in the party. They are concerned that the membership of the party is not being protected against the PPP. They're concerned that they're suffering all sorts of discrimination and indignities. They, they, they're particularly concerned about the economic condition under which they have to live. Um, I have a plan mark, which I have labeled um, regroup, refocus, and rebuild, because I believe that the party must engage those principles to come back together. I believe, Mark, that at the time and the circumstances that we are living in, we need to chart a new road. We have to see ourselves pursuing a new PNC. Um, many of the things that would have happened over the last two, year, two years, or particularly over the last two days, I believe, would have pointed out much of what is wrong in the party. I'm particularly concerned, Mark, that no leader um, in the leadership of the party would have come out to condemn what is happening. Um, that is where we are. That is the sort of leadership, um, not restricted to the leader, but the sort of leadership and the sort of culture that the party sort, sort of seem to be operating under. Those are things that I believe would be destructive to the party and has been destructive. We need to turn our backs from it. We need to chart a new course forward. I believe that I would have demonstrated a track record of work and commitment. The stuff that I would have done, the work I would have done is not for Royce the Ford's benefit, it's for the benefit of the party over personality. And I believe that the membership of the party must engage in an objective assessment, a fair assessment. They must ask themselves, are you better off as a member of the party after the last two years? Are the, is the country better off? And do you believe that you are in a position where you are satisfied with what would have happened to your party? Because the questions that need to be asked by the membership are personal questions. And that is upon that basis we will determine the strength of the party and how we go forward. All right, the strength of the party and how you guys go forward. Uh, just before we go, let me uh, say I noticed um, Sean Anthony Ben is in the audience with us as well tonight. And uh, Sean Anthony Ben is there. And I'm reminded that you just won a big case uh, there for the brother of Sean Anthony Ben. That's Trevor Ben uh, in the Guyana uh, Cooperative Credit Union. Uh, congratulations on that case. You're also on the Guyana Trades, uh, the Teachers Union case as well. Uh, you have been bringing in some victories there uh, for the opposition, the entire opposition, all of them. Thank you so much, and uh, congratulations on those victories, sir. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Appreciate your time, and please do not be a stranger on 107.1 FM. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much, Mark. Good night to your audience. Yep, thank you. Mr. Uh, Ford there, for you guys, uh, we will... Uh, we will be talking to the people who want to contest. I'm not sure if there are others. There could be one other. It could be one other, mind you. Miss um, Brenda Casey has just reminded us that uh, Burke is on, and I didn't realize. I must apologize to Mr. Burke. He was on at 10 o'clock, and so we'll come to the conclusion of tonight's program. Thank you all so much. I know there are some who were against. There are those who were in favor and so forth. And this is the democracy that we want. And I know a lot of you refrain from any sort of derogatory, derogatory remarks. Yes, it's freedom of expression. Yes, it's democracy. But we must be able to raise that uh, level of discourse that we have. Because at the end of the day, guess what? Uh, I, I see you there, Tessa Lane. Eastman, uh, I'll have Simona Bruns on sometime as well. Uh, but we must be able to lift the level of discourse uh, instead of calling, um, uh, at the end of the day, whoever wins, 
all of them have to work together. Every single one of them have to work together because uh, that's the objective in defeating the corrupt PPP regime. All right, guys, thank you all so much. Uh, Desri Simon, um, Lily, Lily Galivia, and all, all others there. Uh, let me just say, I give another warning uh, to, uh, and I'm warning you guys, I'm keeping an eye on Francine. I've known Francine for so many years, but this is, uh, I don't know, something has gone wrong. <laughs> Francine, I don't know what's going on with you, my friend, but please refrain from the attacks. Uh, Brenda Casey is a long follower of this program. And uh, again, I'm warning you, Francine, please uh, don't let's have to give you the donkey. There are times when you make some very positive and very constructive um, uh, comments, and we appreciate that, Francine. But let's keep the risk. Let's keep the it. Let's keep it at the respectful level. And all of you who are listening to us via uh, Village Voice, don't forget go to the Village Voice newspaper. Uh, pick, pick up, uh, share the Village Voice newspaper online. Oh, we've got to go. Carl Miller, stop laughing. Charlene and all of you guys, Bantu King. Your daughter's birthday was the other day, right? Happy birthday to her, man. Belatedly, that is. All right, we've got to go. Uh, hey. You got to pay some bills before we go, right? Support these businesses. God bless you and God bless our beautiful country. There's got to be unity, man. Got to be unity. So long. Hey fans, it's karaoke and oldies night this and every Thursday at Clock Twilight Sideline Dam, Buxton. Dance to the magical songs of yesteryear by popular DJs and Cam's Audio. Admission is free. Come out, let's make memories at Clock Twilight Sideline Dam, Buxton North. Jasniti Kaldata, Francis T. Vietnam, and since 1965, I become a voter, and I always place my ex next to the cup, and what they are doing today, I can't take it, so I have no more vote to give to PPP anymore, I'm not going to vote anymore, no more. if they have to lose by one vote, they're losing it by data.